Hello everyone, what's up? Uh, this is Dave Fountain, by the way. I uh, hope everyone's having a fine Sunday afternoon. I hope it's warm where you're at too, because I know it ain't here. <laughs> uh, it's nice. It's in the high 30s, low 40s here. Uh, in fact, they're talking about us having some snow Sunday night, by the way. But of course, I have to sit and believe it. Anyway, look what I found. I was over at my dad's house about a week ago looking through some boxes and I found an old box with this in it. Uh, yep, this is exactly what it is. I know a lot of you Tamiya guys will know what this particular truck is. This is my vintage Tamiya Blazing Blazer. A uh, little history on this uh, truck. I got uh, I I uh, built this back in the early 80s. I got it, uh, I got it as a Christmas present from my dad. And in fact, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it took me about a month to build it because it's a pretty complex model to build for a kid my age, you know, at the time. So it was an interesting build. And I beat the heck out of it, in the, you know, afterwards. And of course, uh, this is the second body, by the way. The first body lasted me exactly a week before I destroyed it. And it took me about a year to get a new one, so I took much better excuse me I took much better care of it then <laughs> you know afterwards you know as, as you see it's, it's still one piece mostly anyway uh, it's only missing some of the side dams and whatnot you know but I those can be easily made but anyway I ran this thing all the way up to about the late 80s until about 88 89 when I had to put it away because I was trying to get myself ready for graduation i was trying to bring my my grades up and whatnot and i had to put it away and unfortunately it got lost up until about a week ago <laughs> when i found it this thing is a remarkably good condition for for what it was sitting under but <laughs> i mean i mean it had a bunch of stuff sitting on top of the box and it scrunched down good so i was kind of shocked to see the body not just totally utterly destroyed uh anyway um uh, i towed it home it's it's here with me now in fort valley georgia it's sitting on my modeling table and i built plastic models and my airbrush and you know and all other stuff and whatnot and the reason why i brought it home is because you know i've been watching a lot of videos on youtube you know, people restoring a lot of the old vintage Tamiya kits, and Tamiya now re-releasing a lot of the old kits as well. In fact, the you know the Bruiser's been re-released and whatnot. And I would like to see the Blazing Blazer be re-released because uh, you know I want to restore the thing back to operating condition, and it'd be so much easier to get parts in if they re-released it. But uh, but anyway, unfortunately they haven't, so it's going to take me a while to get. Uh, you know the parts I need to redo it's not it's not in need of a whole lot of parts I mean it needs it's got some slop in the front end and whatnot you know and it's got some you know and it needs some TLC on the body you know but mainly I would like to see at least a new radio box being made for it but you know that's not exactly uh needed because it's in fairly decent shape but anyway for those of you who are not familiar familiar with tamiya tamiya is well known for their scale rc models and like the helix and the bruiser and whatnot this is the one before the bruiser this was re -re this was released back in the early 80s uh it's just like with all the all the tamiya kits uh their scale it's got a scale uh, drivetrain in it. It's got, you know, it's got front axles, one piece front axles. It's, uh, it's got drag link uh, front steering system with pitman arm, as you can see right there. You can see the pitman arm right there. Uh, it's got full drive front knuckles and whatnot. And it's got full drive. It's It uses drive shafts right there. It's the drive shaft to the front end. It's got a transfer case. And this drive shaft for the rear end. It's got full leaf spring suspension along with shock absorbers. And it's got an extruded aluminum chassis. Uh, and another notable thing is it's got 
liking herbs yep it's got liking herbs and it's also got a three speed transmission with reverse to select the ball on the fly um uh, it's 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 remarkable for you know how much scale they put in it and of course i don't know if i said but it's got the leaf springs on it but uh and they're functional i mean they actually do work um uh, especially if you put a little weight in it you know you can put a little weight in it to help them squat a little bit and then you can see the suspension work a little bit more but you know another another notable thing about to me the to me kids is their hard bodies they're hard since to me is a big uh, producer of plastic models which i build plastic to me plastic models as well the body is styrene it uh it it's 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 the same stuff that they build their plastic models with uh it has to be painted you know uh this particular body is painted by was painted with a spray can a rattle can but the earlier one was brush painted and like I said, this is the second body. Uh, it's it was painted with I can't remember what brand ta you know, paint so long ago, but you know it's it's aluminum on the top and gloss black. Well, at least it was gloss black. You know it's old now and decrepit, but you know there's a little shot in the inside. You see the dust. You know it hasn't even been cleaned yet. Uh, another noble thing is the wheels, you know, it's got the scale lugs on it and whatnot. I'll lift the body off of it, let y'all take a peek in the inside. You see the transmission right there, you see the top half of the pitman arm, you know. Uh, there's a steering rod for the uh, for the pitman arm or whatnot. There's the back half of the transmission. A little notable, a little note on these things, by the way, for those of you who are not familiar with one of these and happen to lay your hands on one of these. Uh, try not to be convinced to take the transmission apart. Uh, the transmission is rather, it's rather, it's pretty complex. Uh, it's got a, uh, it's got synchronizers, it's got selector forks and all kinds of other little small parts in there and you take it apart get any of them in and unless you index the parts and put them in order you get them mixed up you may have a unless you can find a parts diagram you, you may have a problem putting it back together so i'm just forewarning you on that uh, the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory there's the radio box it's still got a lot of its vintage radio equipment in there let's see if i can pop her open See, for those of you who, are, who have the, uh, or know about the old Patama radio equipment, you'll know these plugs. I mean, these are really old plugs. I can't remember the name. I think these are the Patama J connector. Uh, with exposed gold-plated pins. Uh, the servos are old S, S28 servos. They're not metal gear and they're not ball bearing. Uh, the little center yoke right there is the gear selector this one right there is the steering uh, and of course there's your me mechanical wiper speed control um, when I restore this thing back to operating condition the, the wiper speed control along with the ballast resistor is going to go it's going to be replaced with the ESC it's just going to be a brushed ESC I got an old Traxxas ESC I can put in it because I'm just going to keep the can motor in there is it's in pretty decent condition I actually hooked it up to a battery the other the other day and it ran pretty good of course the servos are going to be upgraded I'm just going to put a I'm going to put a good old 148 with a ball bearing for the uh, gear selector and but the steering is going to be upgraded to a metal gear because it takes a pretty good beating because one of the weak spots of this thing is the uh, is the uh, steering rod because if it gets around and bound it kind of shocks it around and whatnot uh that's usually a good thing anyway it kind of acts as a servo saver but, but that's the radio box i mean it's going the esc is probably going to go right here and the battery goes right here uh the bat it's kind of 
you got to get kind of creative with the battery. But it's actually designed for a hump pack. You know, it's five cells on the bottom and it's got a little battery on the top. And so, I don't know, I'll probably have to custom make a battery pack for it. But, like I said, it's going to be restored. Uh, I'm planning on making a whole series of videos of its restoration. And when, I, when I'm able to get parts, of course. Uh, and hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed that Tamiya will decide to re-release this truck. Um, anyway, this is it. This is what it looks like. She's in, as you see, she's in fairly decent shape. I don't know if I said anything about about the bumper. By the way, this it even has a scale bent bumper. Uh, <laughs> a little humorous little thing is I remember what happened to it. It was way back. It was way back mid '80s. When I was in the backyard and I was charging it on the table, and my old German Shepherd Mickey happened to knock the legs out from the table, and it took a tumble and it knocked it right square on the end of the bumper. So yeah, we got it's got an actual scale bent bumper. So uh, I don't know. I might leave it that way just for nostalgia's sake. But you know, hey, it's there. Anyway. I hope uh, y'all enjoyed this, uh, and look for some look forward for some extra some more videos of its restoration as soon as I'm able to get parts for it. I don't exactly know when I'll get parts, but when I do, you'll start seeing the video. So anyway, my battery's about to run out of this camera, so y'all take it easy and look for this on YouTube. This is Dave Fountain signing out. Bye.